Hey guys, what's up? It's Matt with 86. Wimius, Wimius, Wimius? I'm actually not sure. Wimius Q2 is pretty damn cool though for what it is. I know of this brand, I've looked over their offerings in the past and I have had uh, pretty low expectations for this one in particular. Don't get me wrong, it's not a home theater replacement, but I do want to share some really neat features that made me go, wow, this is pretty cool. In the box, we get a quick start packet, a barrel jack style DC input, which is roughly about three and a half feet long, a remote, a USB to barrel jack charger for people using battery banks, which is what a nice ultra cool portability addition. Kudos for that, for just adding this in here for people that have battery banks and knowing that it needs a barrel jack to charge it. Doesn't leave you to figure it out for yourself, they give you one, which is which is just cool. Good job. An HDMI type A to HDMI type C. HDMI type C's mini HDMI, if you don't know. There's also micro HDMI, not to be confused with the mini HDMI, which is HDMI type C. And the projector itself with a pre-affixed base that can be unscrewed to reveal a thread mount on the bottom in case you want to mount this. The Q2s are really lightweight, 9.2 ounce or roughly 260 grams weighted ultra compact portable 5,000 milliamp hour battery operated projector and it utilizes Android TV 7.1.2 which is in desktop mode and that's actually one of the cool things about it in a weird way. It has one gigabyte of built-in RAM, 32 gigabytes of built-in storage, a smaller SD 540p DLP DMD chip, which can upscale the 1080p, but you're gonna have massive screen door effect. And it offers a boasted 150 ANSI output on max brightness. So let's start with the outside and work our way back around to the stuff I was mentioning. The top is capacitive touch with easy menu controls and the ability to be used as a mouse trackpad. This was super interesting to me. I believe I, I audibly gasped and did a 90s no way. And the trackpad features work awesomely. It also features familiar gesture controls if you use trackpads a lot, things like two finger scrolling or zooming. And while this is a really fun feature, it's definitely not practical to always use the capacitive touch trackpad. So a remote does come in really handy with this. The remote's pretty basic and straightforward. It's one of those, yeah, I've seen this remote before kind of remotes. Uh, it's intuitive, a pretty simple layout. It's just a pretty generic IR remote. In the front of the little projector, we have the lens and a manual dust cover. This can be gently slid to open or close. A really cool kind of neat feature that I probably otherwise wouldn't have anticipated in something like this, so that's just fun. On the right side is a tiny focus wheel. As the focus on this little guy is all manual, it's pretty sensitive, but pretty easy to use. I can get it in the focus really quickly. On the back is the IR receiver, which your IR remote will need to be able to have a degree of line of sight to. Below this, this is the USB type A and a 3.5 millimeter aux jack for outsourcing your audio and the analog style or you can go with headphones. Moving over to the left side, and by the way, these directions are all if you're standing behind its projection source, so my directions are based on that. You, you don't have a backwards one. I'm just probably saying it backwards depending on how you're thinking about it. So like I said, moving on to the left side, HDMI Type-C, aka the mini HDMI. And while the Q2 does come with an HDMI-C to HDMI-A cable, this may be important to know. If you need an input adapter for something like a streaming stick to connect to, you may want to know that you need an HDMI-C to HDMI-A adapter so that you'll be able to do that. That's something they don't include, but would be pretty cool if they did. Also on the same side is our fan exhaust, and it's a noticeable fan, but not overly offensively noticeable. Here, let's pause here and have a listen to that fan real quick. While we're on the topic of sound and listening, let's see what the built-in sound sounds like. We'll be playing Liquid's Birthday, and we'll see just how good or bad these speakers are. You be the judge. I'm not going to have any input on that. I'll let you decide what you think. And just make sure you know, recorded audio is never a one-to-one -one in person experience, but hopefully it gives you an idea. Q2 can connect to external Bluetooth speakers, and this little guy utilizes Bluetooth 5.2, so if some better wireless external sound is craved by you, it's totally doable. The Q2 has a baked-in third-party eShare application that also allows for screen sharing and airplay. That one I'm also going to leave up to you to decide if that's something you'd want to do or not. I'm not always a big fan of third-party apps. While the Q2 features good things like auto keystone and manual if you choose it, the biggest downside for the Q2 is that what you see is what you get. I could find no color temperature adjustments, no contrast or exposure adjustments, and I 
I emailed them and asked them and they said it's just not an option. So you don't have things like changing RGB color adjustments. This is a mild disappointment limiting the end user control and you hope not to see it, but in the event that you do see it, it's important I think people know that before they make a purchasing decision. Control is removed from your ability on this projector. You can change brightness and you can turn it all the way up, all the way down, but but that's that's the extent of your end user control. All right, I'll leave you with some side-by-side -side light and dark environment shots to hopefully demo something of value to you. The screen used is a 92 inch ALR 1.3 gain screen and for your references some images of the room with lights on and in the darkness so that you can make a good comparison idea. You guys have a great day night whatever it is I'll see you in the next video that I do.